Module four, review questions. This is for Apologia Physics. Question number one, explain how you should look at two-dimensional situations so as to make them as easy as possible. Well, really, you should always try to see the one-dimensional problems that make up the two-dimensional situation. So to simplify a two-dimensional situation, break it down into two independent one dimension one dimensional motions along perpendicular axes and we usually consider them x and y we analyze each component separately and then recombine the results to understand the overall behavior in two dimensions so essentially just treat the situation as if it's happening on two separate planes making calculations and reasoning that much easier. Question number two, what do we know about the X and Y components of a projectile's velocity when the projectile is at its maximum height? All right, so let's take a look at this. So this is uh, figure 4.9 on page 109. Here we have it broken out. This is the initial velocity and it's broken out into its Y components and it's broken out into its X components. So when a projectile reaches its maximum height, which is right here, the y component of its velocity is zero. The x component is the same as when the projectile is launched. Question number three. A projectile lands at a height equal to the height at which it was launched after a total flight of four seconds. How many seconds after launch does it reach its maximum height? For a projectile of this type, the maximum height is always reached at the midpoint of the journey. Thus, it reaches its maximum height in two seconds. A projectile is fired upwards with a speed of 150 meters per second. When it once again reaches the height from which it was launched, what is its speed? Okay, since the X component of the velocity never changes and the magnitude of the Y component when it lands is the same as the magnitude when it was launched, the overall speed is the same when it lands as it was when it launched. Thus, the speed is 150 meters per second. What happens to the Y component of a projectile's velocity as the projectile travels through the air? When the projectile is first launched right here, the Y component of its velocity continually decreases until it reaches zero, which you can see in our um, parabolic motion. After that, the Y component becomes more and more negative until the projectile hits the ground. If a projectile is fired in empty space, no planets or stars in the area, will it still follow a parabolic path? No, since there's no gravity, no planets or stars in the area, there will be no acceleration in the Y dimension. There is already no acceleration in the X dimension, so as a result, there will be no acceleration in either. This means that the velocity will never change, so the projectile will travel in a straight line. In which of the following situations can you use equation 4.9? It can only be used in equation B. Only in this situation does the projectile land at a height equal to that from which it was launched. A sharpshooter tells a nervous man to hold out a can at arm's length. The sharpshooter says that he will shoot the can out of the man's hand. The sharpshooter realizes, however, that the nervous man will be scared at the sound of the gun and will drop the can as soon as the gun fires. In order to still hit the can, should the sharpshooter aim above, below, or straight at the can? This is, of course, a hypothetical situation. It would be far too dangerous to actually do this. <laughs> All right, so this is the same situation as the fired bullet, dropped bullet, that I asked you to consider. If the man drops the can, it will begin to accelerate downwards with the acceleration due to gravity. The same thing is going to happen to the bullet once the gun is fired. And as a result, the bullet and the can will follow identical paths in the Y dimension. Thus, they will both fall in the same amount in the Y dimension. Therefore, the sharpshooter needs to aim directly at the can. In the question above, suppose the man holding the can is not nervous and the sharpshooter knows that he will hold on to the can even after the gun is fired. Should the sharpshooter aim above, below, or at the can in order to hit it? All right, 
So in this situation, the can will not fall in the wide dimension because the man is going to just uh, hold on to it. The bullet, however, is still going to fall as it travels to the can. Thus, to hit the can, the sharpshooter must aim above the can to account for the fact that the bullet is going to fall a little bit. And the last question, question 10, what have we ignored when solving all the projectile motion problems that we have done? The answer, we have neglected air resistance. That will change the acceleration in the y dimension as well as add an acceleration to the x dimension.